When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. Welcome to the first video of the environmental pollution chapter. Well, doing this video, we'll cover the first dot point, which says identify oxides of nonmetals which act as acids and describe the conditions under which these act as acids. There's two parts. First, we have to identify and then we have to describe as well. What I'll do first, I'll actually talk about quickly what oxides were because it mentions we have to talk about oxides of nonmetals. And oxides, the most famous one, or the most one, the one that you're going to be exposed to the most, would be an iron oxide. Another word for an iron oxide would be rust itself. So we can see this train here is rusted, and the reason why it's rusted is because over time it's come in contact with oxygen. So the word oxide has oxygen in it, and anything which is an oxide has usually has an oxygen attached in its in structure somewhere. So for example. Here we've got substance A, any substance, and this has reacted with oxygen, and this happens when an oxide is formed. So we have some substance which reacts with oxygen, and it forms the substance A oxide. So whatever that was becomes an oxide. So an example you can have is magnesium plus O2 becomes magnesium oxide. Now, so those two here were just to balance the equation, but we've got magnesium reacting with oxygen to form a magnesium oxide. And you can see the oxides in the structure. Now, why do we need to talk about oxides? Well, we need to talk about oxides because oxides can have something to do with pH and acidity. And we, in this case, we have to talk about the acidic oxides and which one they were. And this specifically would be the nonmetals. But I'm also going to talk about the, the metals as well and what kind of oxides they produce, just to show you, because we need to know that for the next point as well, and it's just to show you what kind of reactions they are. So the basic oxides are your metals. I'm going to go over that now. So first I'm going to describe, and then I'm going to name some as well. That's what we have to do for this top point. So first I'll describe. So I said earlier that the, met, the metals produce, produce basic oxides. And the reason why is because here we have barium oxide and barium is a metal. So that's why this is a metal oxide because barium is a metal. And when that reacts with water, so H2O, it forms an ion, barium 2 plus, and also this hydroxide. And if you remember, hydroxide is actually what makes something a base. So by reacting an oxide with water, we've created the metal ion plus this hydroxide group, and this hydroxide group makes things basic. And the reason why it actually has done this is because here we have the barium which has lost electrons. So here we've got two plus, which means this barium has lost electrons. And it's given these electrons to the water molecule to produce that one molecule produce two OH minus. So what happened is the reason why bases, metals are good bases, basic oxides, is because metals tend to give electrons. And they've given, given electrons to water, which has made them a hydroxide or two hydroxide compounds. And these hydroxide compounds are basic. So another example, so this is when we put it, so this is when it's soluble. When we have a soluble metal, we can put it into water and see what happens. But what, what happens if we can't put it into water? How can we figure out if it's basic or, or not basic then? What we can actually do is put, so this here is our metal again. This is our non-soluble metal, so it won't dissolve in water. What we can do instead is we can put it into hydrochloric acid. So this here is our strong acid. And if this were to act like a base, so if this is actually a base, what would happen if you put a base and an acid together? It's something called a neutralization reaction. So when you put a base and a metal together, we have a neutralization action reaction that occurs. And if salt is formed, so we have a salt plus water being formed. And this only occurs if we have both an acid and a base present. So we know we have our Acid, hydrochloric acid, we know that's an acid. And if this were an actual base, we will have a salt forming. And in this case, the reaction when we have copper oxide plus hydrochloric acid, we have copper dichloride forming. This is our salt. And we also have water forming. So this is just a normal product as it should be. So here we can see a neutralization reaction has occurred when we put copper, chlor copper oxide into hydrochloric acid. 
and thereby we can say, okay, this has acted as a base, so this must be a base. So if it's soluble, we can put it into water and figure out what happens in terms of it releasing hydroxide ions, and we can simply test the pH of this water. So we can test the pH of water and figure out if it's changed the pH, increase the pH, but if it's not soluble, we can't do that, we can't put it into water. But instead we can test it with acids, so we can dissolve in acids, and when it's an actual base, what will happen is we'll neutralize the acid and form a salt. And that's what occurred when we put copper oxide, which is a metallic oxide, into hydrochloric acid. It's formed a salt, which is a proof that it's a basic oxide. Now this actual dot point asks us to describe the conditions under which nonmetals act as acidic oxides. So nonmetals, remember this was your... Nonmetals are your mostly gases. So nonmetals are mostly gases on your periodic table such as oxygen or sulfur or nitrogen or those kind of compounds. And they can find, I'm going to go over that in the next video, but they can be found more on the right-hand side of the actual periodic, periodic table. So here we have sulfur oxide, and we react that with water, as we did beforehand. And what happens now is this sulfur will actually not lose electrons, but will grab onto whatever it can, form a really strong covalent bond and it has formed sulfuric acid. So this is sulfuric acid. What happens with sulfuric acid as soon as it hits water, it will dissociate, and I'll go over that in the future as well, into a hydrogen ion and this hydrogen sulfate ion. Right? So here we've got that reaction that happened, and we've just proven one way, so we could have tested this with a pH meter to check the pH, what happens when we put sulfur dioxide into water and what actually happened is it became made it more acidic. So that's one condition under which these act as acids by putting it into water and seeing what happens to pH. And in this case, because it will actually gain all those electrons and become a big bigger compound, it will have become an acid. And this will then dissociate into hydrogen ions which will make the actual solution more acidic. Whereas on the flip side, if it's non-soluble, what we can do is we can do the same thing. We, here we have our acid, and we don't know if we want to figure out if it's an acid, and we test it with an actual strong base. So this is our strong base. And we know if it actually is an acid, it will form a neutralization reaction in the form of salt and water in that neutralization reaction. And that's what actually happened if we put sulfur trioxide into sodium hydroxide solution. It will form this salt and also water itself. So these are the two main situations under which we have a non-metal oxide f forming and that for acting as an acid. Either if you put that non-metal oxide into solution, water solution, and it will dissociate into sulfuric acid and then produce a hyd hydrochloric acid ions, and we can test that with a pH meter. Or if you put a non-insoluble one that doesn't dissolve into a strong base solution, and that will act as an acid because acids and bases together make a neutralization reaction and thereby produce salt and water. And we'll go over the other one, which is the amphotheoretic oxides in the next video, but those are neutral ones. And those are ones that can either act as an acid or a base. And some of the ones that are important for you to remember, so it says, first I will describe the conditions under which these act as acids. The next one is identify oxides of nonmetals as acids. This one, sulfur, sulfur trioxide here, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, and again, I don't know why I did it twice. But these are all examples of oxides which act as acids. These are all non-metals. I'm going to go over that more in the next video as well. But yes, you should know the two main situations when it reacts with water to form sulfuric acid, as this example here, or when it acts when it is combined with a base if it's an acid, it will form a salt and water. Those were the two main conditions. And some of the examples, some of the oxides are carbon dioxide, sulfur trioxide, sulfur dioxide, and nitrogen dioxide. But I'll cover them more in the next video as well. Thank you for watching.